So I was just scrolling through Instagram the other day and I received some life-changing news. I can 10X my money for only $500 using Bitcoin? I just had to find out more. So I hopped on my computer to take a closer look at the Instagram comments I was reading. And I kept seeing the same thing over and over and over. All these random people posting almost identical comments about how they achieved financial success through another profile tagged in the comment. Clearly, this has to be a scam, where they ask for a small amount of money up front in return for promising to 10x you your investment in about a week or so. And instead of giving you your money back, they just keep it for themselves. Now, I don't want to point any fingers, but if I had to guess, it's these tagged accounts that are the ones running the scam and not the people writing the comments, which are most likely bots. But why are there so many of these fake accounts spamming the comment section? Are they all promoting the same scam? Or perhaps these are all different scams, but umbrella underneath the same organization. To find out, I started visiting some of the accounts that were being tagged through these spam comments. They all look pretty similar, asking us to DM them to get started, where presumably they would then ask us for money and disappear. Now, just to be clear for legal reasons, I am not claiming as a fact that any of these profiles are committing scams because I don't have any hard evidence and everyone is innocent until proven guilty. I'm merely saying that, in my opinion, I believe there is a high probability that these accounts are running scams where they steal your money. I don't have any proof, but throughout this video, this is just my opinion when I refer to them as scammers and not fact. Like this guy, for example, maybe he's legit. He only accepts business from serious people. Well, I'm a very serious person, but seriously, what is going on here? Since the accounts look relatively similar, I'm imagining one possibility is that one organization is behind this and they're all sharing similar resources like the spam bots, and maybe they're sharing internet services, IP addresses, and phone numbers. So in this hypothesis, we have the spamming robots leaving comments to promote the profiles, which are all run by employees of a single organization and all share resources like phone numbers and the spam bots. Another possibility is that these are all different scammers, each operating a different scam. However, for some reason, they're all sharing the same type of promotion where they're using these spam accounts to flood comments on Instagram. So instead of having the spamming robots working for the scammers directly, they're instead working for a separate organization operating a social media spamming farm, I mean marketing service. From there, the different scammers purchase promotions from the spammer, I mean marketer. To figure out what's going on, I decided to perform an OSINT investigation. OSINT stands for Open Source Intelligence, meaning we're going to draw conclusions based on open data we find around the internet in the public domain, such as from Instagram. And because this investigation is purely based on public information, such as all the contact details these scammers publicly advertise to promote themselves, I'm not going to be blurring anything out in this video. So I took another look at some of these profiles and noticed that a lot of them want you to contact them through WhatsApp, where we can see the phone number they're using displayed publicly on Instagram. This is fantastic when it comes to doing an investigation, because phone numbers are irrefutable evidence we can use to try and trace these people down, or at the very least, we can look for different patterns between the phone numbers we find. Like, if all the phone numbers are from the same service provider, it's probably safe to assume that there's one organization who pays for all these phone numbers and then distributes them out to individual scammers working for an organization. So in order to find a pattern, I would need to collect a lot more profiles, about 100 or so. So I went back to Instagram and kept scrolling through comments until I found 100 unique usernames that were being promoted through these spam comments promoting financial freedom. Now the next step is to get the phone number from all of these Instagram profiles for when they share it publicly. So to do this, I would need to use the Instagram mobile app and look up each profile. See, sometimes they hide their phone number in the WhatsApp link, but instead make it available through the contact button, which is only available on mobile. 
And while I would love to just sit around here and browse through all 100 profiles on my phone all day, I decided to look into ways to automate this to get the phone numbers, specifically using the Steve C data platform, which no surprise, full disclosure, I happen to own that platform and yes, it's a paid service. The Steve C data platform has an Instagram username lookup workflow, which takes in a list of usernames and returns a very detailed spreadsheet with their contact information, including phone number. But because this is an unofficial integration, per this disclaimer, I can't actually use this nor promote this specific workflow to anyone because it may or may not violate Instagram's terms of service. So instead, I uh, hired my friend Steve to do all this work for me and compile all the phone numbers and details into a big spreadsheet he then sent me, doing all this work manually. Even though I could have just used the Steve C data platform to do this, which is linked to in the description, but because it's an unofficial integration with Instagram, I can't advertise anyone go and use it. So here's the spreadsheet that my friend Steve gave me with all the details of the 100 accounts I looked up. I should note that this only shows profiles that are business accounts. So out of the 100 we started with, only about 60 were able to look up since they were business accounts. And we can verify that this worked properly by scrolling to the phone number column here for the first account we manually tried and confirm that the phone number here is the same as the one listed on the Instagram mobile app. So here I just cleaned everything up a bit and also grabbed the website URLs the scammers are using. And we can see that not all of them share a phone number. It's only about 20 accounts with a listed phone number. Since only 20% of the scammers want to communicate by phone or text and share a phone number publicly, this makes me believe that this isn't one big organization, but rather different scammers, each with their different preferred way of running the scam. Some want to do it through WhatsApp, some through text, and some through Instagram DMs. But 20 different phone numbers is still a good amount to do a little OSINT investigation with to see what more we can uncover. So here's a really good video that goes into a lot more detail on finding phone number information I have linked to in the description you can check out. And it mostly relies on using this tool here called Phone Infoga. Unfortunately though, since that video was made, Phone Infoga has been stripped down a bit and doesn't do as much as it used to. Like it doesn't directly query Google for us and it's mostly useful now for just querying NumVerify and also forging queries we can manually run on Google ourselves. NumVerify is a service that will return details about a phone number, like where it's located, if it's a mobile number or landline, and more importantly, which carrier is the provider. What's nice is that they offer a free plan for making up to 250 lookups per month that anyone can sign up for. So you're welcome to query NumVerify directly or try Phone in Foga. I'll link them both in the description. But for this video, I'm going to use this DC data platform so I can look up this list of 20 phone numbers as quickly as possible and get it back out as a CSV file we can put into Google Sheets. I just copy the phone numbers, clean them up a little bit by removing the pluses, then paste them into this DC data workflow for NumVerify. I provide my NumVerify API key and CC combines all the data together into a single spreadsheet here. So I imported my spreadsheet back into Google Sheets to take a look and something immediately looks off. They all don't look like the same type of phone number. Most of these are listed as landlines with no carrier, which from my experience, I find this to mean that it's typically a virtual burner number like from Google Voice or TextNow that the scammer is deliberately using to hide their identity. Regardless, we can still proceed to the next step of our OSINT investigation with these phone numbers using the second feature of Phone Infoga and running Google searches. Back on Phone Infoga's webpage, they link to a demo instance which we can use to generate useful Google queries to trace our phone numbers without having to install Phone Infoga on our computer. You just click on the link and the site opens up a new tab with the Google search query. So don't get your hopes up for this first phone number. It looked like a Google voice number or burner number. So this person knows what they're doing and concealing their identity. We can see there's not much on Google. A lot of these are sketchy sites that claim to do phone lookups, 
but have varying degrees of success and credibility. So let's try the next phone number and see if we can find anything. And nope, looks pretty empty. Again, another virtual burner number the scammer is deliberately using to hide their identity. So while we could keep going and trying these phone numbers one by one, I'd like to try and do something smarter and prioritize our search a bit more. You see, if we look closely at the phone number types, we can see that a few have a mobile carrier, meaning they aren't burner virtual numbers and we have a higher chance of finding something on Google since they're most likely a physical phone. Specifically, this one here belongs to Metro PCS, which is a well-known American carrier and we even have a location of Brentwood, New York. This does not appear to be a burner number and I'd expect to be able to better trace this phone number on Google. So let's give this one a try and see if we have some better luck running our Google search. Here we have people reporting that this phone number is behind a potential scam. We can look at this screenshot provided here from someone else and see that yes, it does appear to be of the type of scams that we're investigating on Instagram, where the scammer tries to get the victim to send $1,500 in order to redeem these so-called profits, which are most likely non-existent. And the scammer will just keep the money and disappear. And here's a second complaint calling out the phone number holder as a scammer, this time with a link to the Instagram profile. However, it looks like the Instagram account was taken down. And from more people on this forum, we can see this person also has a Twitter account listing the same phone number promoting more related Bitcoin scams. They also have a similar Facebook account using very similar photos, which were most likely stolen from another innocent victim, most likely taken from a dating website. Now, although we couldn't find a link to Instagram using Google, we do have our own database of phone numbers and Instagram profiles. So we can just do a quick lookup in Google Sheets using the Instagram data we collected to reveal the scammer's Instagram profile. And wow, he must have gotten a real makeover here because this looks like a totally different person from the last profiles we saw traced with the Google search. Even though everyone's using the same phone number that we traced and they're all pushing similar cryptocurrency scams. What happens is that these scammers, I believe they go on dating websites and look for photos that are private so they're not indexed by Google and they go and use them and steal them from innocent victims to build these fake profiles they use to run their scams with. So wow, we uncovered a lot. All because that one account was dumb enough to use an actual physical phone number when running this scam and not a virtual burner phone like the more sophisticated scammers we looked into. So to me, this is even more evidence that because we're seeing different levels of sophistication in how they hide their phone number, this isn't one master organization, but rather a range of different scammers of the 100 profiles. Some of them know what they're doing more than others. Now, does this mean there are 100 different scammers within these 100 profiles? Not exactly. See, I hired my friend Steve to also collect Instagram comments, which I could have done through the Steve C data platform linked to below. And I uncovered some unusual patterns with the comment language, which leads me to believe that these aren't 100 individuals, but maybe say a dozen or so, and each of them are using different accounts. For example, I noticed the phrase great woman appear in the comments in a few places, specifically promoting only these two accounts, which are both using similar burner phone numbers on the East Coast. And when I search all of the comments for the phrase great woman, I can see it's exclusively used on only these two accounts and that these accounts combined only get five mentions of which four use the phrase great woman. So this language appears to be restricted to only these two accounts, almost like they specified how they'd like to be called out in the comments. Now, what about another account? How many mentions do you think we'll find in the comments? Around five like the others? Let's pull one at random and we'll see 19 mentions with the language being very different. I checked out a few more of these accounts in the comment spreadsheet and I did find more variations. It seemed that some accounts were purchasing more mentions in the comments than other accounts. 
so it's not an even distribution. And I also found that the language seemed to vary a lot in that other scammers would prefer different phrases they would use to promote themselves. For instance, in addition to the great woman comments I saw, which was isolated to only two accounts being promoted, I kept seeing the phrase, another great withdrawals, and that was isolated to a separate sector of maybe five or six accounts being promoted. So this makes me fairly certain now that whoever's behind all these spamming comments is not the same person that's behind the actual Bitcoin scams. It seems like what's happening is that each of these scammers operate independently and purchase these fake comments from a third party spammer that runs the bots. They tell the third party what specific language to use in the promotion and the target accounts to promote in the comments. Then the spammer runs the comment bot and makes its money that way. And what's ironic here is that since these appear to all be independent scammers unaware of each other, they don't realize that when they buy these promotions, they're literally being placed next to each other, arousing so much suspicion around everyone's operation as a whole, hopefully which will bring everyone down. But what's also troubling, if this hypothesis is correct, is that because these scammers are paying for these promotions, it means that these scams are unfortunately working and people are falling for them if there's a market for these spam bots to promote them. So how can we stop these scammers from stealing more money? Well, first of all, please like this video. That way YouTube will show it to more people who may not be aware of this scam and they'll see this and know not to fall for this. Second, start reporting the target accounts mentioned in the comments. Don't bother reporting the person making the comment as it's just a bot account and the spammers will just keep making new ones. Just please make sure you only report accounts that are advertising financial returns in exchange for money. Don't report innocent accounts just because a spam bot mentioned them. Actually go to the account and make sure they're running a scam. If you're not sure, try to bait them with a DM. Say, yes, I'm interested how much to use your service. Once they give you a price, it's probably safe to report them. It would be even better if Instagram could find a way to automatically solve this problem for us. The trick is though, they can't get these accounts in trouble just because a third party spam bot mentioned them. It's not a crime to simply be mentioned on Instagram. So it's tricky to enforce this. I could see a solution though, to maybe find a way to shadow ban these from the comment section or have a suspected spam section in the comments so they stop polluting me when I'm just trying to read the news. And then we can finally regain our beloved comment section on Instagram, free from spam, where only intelligent, respectful, and insightful interactions can once again take place. So I hope you had fun and learned something today. I know I sure did. I'll leave links to all the tools we used in the description in case you want to use them yourself for your own OSINT investigation. Thank you for watching and stay data-driven.